Hi guys, on the hour I'm going to show you how I make a Viking longboat. Um, I will see you then. Thanks, bye. Hi guys, 
Welcome to Carly's Creative Clay. I'm Carly. Um, I hope you've all had a good week. It's lovely to see you, Daft Bra. I um, hear you've been doing all kinds of wonderful creations yourself digitally. And hi, Fairy Hedgehog. Right, um, I'm going to start off showing you how that dragon lady turned out. We've been working on her for many, many weeks. I She is now in my shop. Got the crystal ball mounted. Obviously, it's all been baked and I've varnished and I've done makeup on her. So let's get her face up close. I've done a gold to black fade on the eyeshadow. Oh, good, to see you too. good to see you. And um, a very slight pink blusher. What I did was I mixed mica powder in with the varnish to do the makeup. So, and I used my Ron Seal gloss varnish on the dragon, the base, and her clothing. But on her, her hair and the pillar, I used the Deco Art Duraclear varnish. It's a little more matte than the Ronsil is and I wanted to age up the pillow a bit so I got some green chalk pastel scraped a bit off with my blade and just dabbed it on to the pillar in places to look a bit mossy if you see what I mean I think it turned out really well so because she is let's move my stand out of the way because she's a lot bigger than the first dragon woman if you can see the size comparison um that's in for just under 100 and this one is in my shop at 138 so again there is only one of each of these if you want them you gotta get in quick Right, let's get her to one side and talk about the newest project. Now, last week I did say I was going to make a Sasquatch Bigfoot and I do still plan to make that but I wanted to actually um, do something that isn't a humanoid next just to give myself a break. So that will be the project after this one so I was looking through the list of animals that I haven't made and I came up with squid and I thought it's going to be really difficult to make a squid into an interesting model so then I came across the idea I don't know if you've heard the story of the Kraken it's a I think it's a Greek myth yeah I think it's Greek and it's been depicted as either a giant squid or a giant octopus. And since I made a lot of octopus, I'm not going to go down that way. But the story behind it is it's a humongous um, squid that can be called up. Oh, is it Norse? Right, Norse. That covers pretty much the whole area. Um, it comes up and drags ships down and destroys them and things like that so I was looking through the different old-fashioned ships and as much as I'd like to make one of the big old-fashioned war galleys they've got at least three sails a lot a lot of rigging huge amounts of wires and ropes all over the place and I think it's going to make it really difficult for me to do that. So I came across the Viking longboat. And this is a picture of it. Sorry, we're just bringing it up now. As you can see, it's quite a simple design. And it's right for the period of time where the myth was around. So I thought I'd go with that. The only major difference to the one I'm doing on the picture the dragon head's going to be a bit more 
my sort of style of dragon. Um, the shields along the side, I'm actually, I've made some colourful ones with some sort of Viking-ish designs. And obviously it's not going to be on the boat prop. That See the two little planks underneath? That is purely so that you can stand it on a sideboard and it not roll over. What I'm going to do is, if you come back to what I've done, I've made the armature for it already. So I'll talk through what I'm going to do, how I got that. But what I plan to do, picture this, big old load of blue and I'll use some liquid Fimo and whip it up with some metallic blue and white to make some sort of frothy waves. This is going to be angled half out of the water up on its side like that. Then I'm going to do the giant squid holding the top of the boat up with a tentacle and being propped down under there and hopefully I'm going to get some little viking guys falling off and in the water so don't want much from it do i just to show you how to do a squid but i thought far more fun so how i got started an armature if you haven't come across the term before is any structure that is used inside something to give it strength and the ability to maintain its form so your skeleton is an armature for a human that kind of thing so we tend to use foil and wire inside polymer clay and the reasoning behind it is a there's a few reasons firstly your clay it needs to reach temperature in order to turn from soft into hard and when you've got a very thick piece you're risking the centre staying soft which is far less of a structurally sound thing than having hard foil in the centre. Um, the other thing is when just before the clay goes hard it goes slightly softer so I have had things fall apart in the oven before so if in doubt make a foil structure and then put your clay around it now normally I just use my board just to smooth out the sides of the clay but it's only compacted together by scrunching it with my hands on this boat I wanted it to be a lot firmer because I'm going to have it sticking up so I actually took a pin hammer and spent about 20 minutes with lots of breaks in between hammering it so that it's really actually very sturdy and you want quite a shallow boat because you're going to be putting clay around the outside of it so that's not its finished size now if you saw on the long boat picture there were the two ornate sides so to the left there is that curl and to the right the dragon head well these are the wires go, can we go back right these are the wires that are going to hold that in place so i just literally shaped some florist wire um quite a low number florist wire you want i think this is around an 18 the, low, <clears throat> the lower the number, the thicker the wire. That wire actually curves all the way through there and I use my needle tool to poke a guide hole and then push in the rest of the wire that's going to secure into the boat. It still wobbles sideways a bit even though I have masking taped it in place but the clay will help hold that how I want once we get claying around it <clears throat> the mast again I it's florist wire cut it to the height that I wanted and the cross beams what I did was I got two pairs of plier and I wrapped the wire around and then pulled it tight so there is a loop around the back and then I fastened it 
together with masking tape you can also use um, metal epoxy does an even stronger hold than the masking tape ever will um, what was that message? that was me apologising oh. for bumping the microphone oh sorry okay right that just slides in and out and again I used a needle tool to make a guide hole for that so that's how we got to this now stage one I'm going to want to put a coat in a clay around this so that it's got a better surface for the raw clay to actually attach to and this don't have to be neat because you're not actually going to see any of this so I got some brown rolled it out pretty thin and I am literally just going to smudge it into place up the sides a bit there now it's better if you don't trap any air because you want it to attach to your foil properly now got too much clay so let's cut that down a bit so probably that um, you can use a craft knife but you won't get a straight line it's far e it doesn't need to be a straight line I'm just um, many years of having my rigid tissue blade as my go-to blade just because I find it far easier to manage so let's wrap that up now these ends are where you're going to risk trapping air so it's better to pinch it and form ridges then it literally is just some light brown clay that I had rolled out um, FIMO has actually brought out a leather effects clay and it seems they've mixed fiber in with the clay Strange. and I've heard a lot of reviews on it I've heard some very mixed reviews it does bake up and feel a lot like leather so they've been successful in what they've produced I've heard it can clog up a pasta machine if you try and put it through it can um, but I, I don't know I've not tried it myself I've also heard that it can it's harder to work with because it's got fibers in it than normal clay I will get some and give it a play around at some point but I think the clay supplier that I use have only recently got it in so probably on my next order if I remember I'll put some on my worry is I'm gonna get it I'm gonna like it and then it be another range of clays that I need to add to my stockpile so it looks scruffy at the moment that's fine we're gonna sort all that out what I'm just making sure is that it's all firmly attached to my foil now if you haven't spent ages hammering the granny out of your foil and it's got sharp points to it cover it in masking tape before you put your clay on because any sharp points on your foil will stick straight through your clay right almost there with this just gonna get this these end bits looking a little bit more tidy because they're not the same shape that they were that the armature was basically I'm just crisping up some of these lines there we go so it's pretty quick to do and now they're a little more rigid and we've got a good hole for the mask and that's starting to firm up as well right let's get all this spare brown out of the way when you've rolled up sheets make sure that when you scrunch it back together you're not trapping big air bubbles I am absolutely terrible for doing so scrunching up my leftovers and not 
paying attention to what I'm doing and yeah you can pop air bubbles in your clay but it is a faff like that that's an air bubble you can see can you see the let's bring it up how the clay just there has got a bulge to it so anything sharp and pointy just go in pop it push the air out of the hole and then you can just smooth it over so it's not the end of the world to get them but it just gives you a little bit of extra work so now I want to make fake wood for the boat so let's put the boat to one side get my tissue blade out of harm's way and I'm going to show you what I made up so far mixed up a load of different shades of brown and I rolled them into strips of different thicknesses and it looks better if your strips aren't a uniform thickness so can you see that bit's thinner than that bit on the brown and in some of them I've wedged a bit of different colour in between in different bumpy shapes yeah now the last thing that we're going to need is what I've done is cut off about that much off the end pinched one side flat and then rolled it up to form these little spirals you don't need much of a roll so you really don't need to bring it out and roll it up really small you're just looking for a little knot now it looks edible but maybe that's because I'm hungry and I need to go make dinner <laughs> yeah dinner sounds good always we're going to put these in in a random positions and push the slices together so that's overlapping there the only thing that I'm doing that isn't random about it is making sure that like this I'm not putting two colors that are the same together so the knot is that mix so let's do that with it like that um, put the last one up the top there and let's do this Hi, hearty hearty life welcome I'm just you just got me making fake wood so that's the kind of sandwich we got and we yes there are air bubbles but as we reduce this it will all push out so we need to get this a whole lot smaller because that's too big for a plank of wood that knot is bulging out too much so I'm just starting to squeeze along that top edge and I'm gonna straighten up the sides so that they're easier to reduce so we're reducing a rectangle and what I'm trying to do is pull the clay so it's going further out that way but shrinking in width and height I know right it's it's browns and stick shape and we've all been saying ourselves it looks edible we think it's because we're hungry so you're in good company can you see I'm just bringing it out so that it's wider and shorter and the reason why I'm doing that is because I want some little narrow planks to be able to start putting wood around the side of our ship and it's going to be no good being this bigger design but the joy of polymer clay is where it's elastic you can do this it actually will hold the design 
but you need to go from the middle out if you start trying to go from one side you can distort it if that makes sense so this is still far too long right my aim is to get it so that I can cut slices that look like planks now you see me do complex picture canes and kaleidoscope canes this is also a form of caning but it's making woodwork and I have done this and made a trinket box for I think it was a friend of mine called Lydia that was a log cabin and all the inside was all planked out with canes like this once you've actually got it made it's really quick and easy to start using it as wood panelling for walls and all sorts of things so learning to make a wood cane is actually a hugely useful thing and obviously you can take this down as small as you want or as big as you want but we're almost there for where I want actually I think All right now I've been thinking over the next few months I'm going to be working on making mythical animals so I'm thinking things like Sasquatch and werewolves or dogmen or aliens and all that sort of thing so you're going to be seeing a whole lot of mythical stuff for me and if you have any suggestions of anything you want to see I'm happy to take suggestions and make things I'm also happy to answer any questions that you have right I think we've got it right lengthwise I just want it a little bit thinner because at the moment one sheet is half the boat which is just um, too wide now you can use a rolling pin on it or you can just literally pinch along it but do remember to turn over and not do it all on one side or you'll get more compression on one side of the image if that makes sense right I reckon we're where I want to be so let's give this a cut up and I'll show you what I've ended up with and I'll either I've worked or it wouldn't that's the joy of live stream that bit's a bit thick still always make sure you go up your ends as well right okay let's chop so that's what I've ended up with can you see so there's knots and there's lots of different wood colors through it so I can then start cutting thin slices and using it as planks and you can literally use different shades of browns you can go for different sorts of wood grains this is not a specific wood I was trying for I think if you really get into it you can actually go for specific types of wood but this is still effective so what we got are planks like that so what I can do is then 
bring the ship in like this and start at one side and even though it rounds off you can just pinch the wood into shape and I'm starting by making it level actually let's bring that over a little bit more because it's not wrapped round enough you want to make sure that the two sides will meet so when I bring wood down that side it will meet along the bottom line of the ship so like that so that's my first planking we're gonna go across the whole thing like that then that gives you the line up for the next line down because the next line down you're going to put the join line from the top line halfway along the next line across like you do with brickwork that's the kind of design i've seen on a lot of ships but you can make it so that there's a step down so instead of bringing it halfway you bring it just a few centimeters along so that it makes an almost step design if that makes sense now this plank i'm gonna do what you can't generally do with planks and bend it right up like that then put it on its side and now it would be good to get your craft knife out to cut along that little line I never throw away end bits of wood cane I always find stuff to do with it so yeah let's get the next one in I'm gonna put in the halfway along bit like that and then use that end bit to patch in that gap that I just cut off. Isn't it fortunate that that fit that well? So then I can just bring it along like this. Now, I really haven't been up to much this week other than sitting around and doing getting over a virus so I haven't got lots to tell you about unfortunately but an interesting thing I can say is it's fascinating that for ages the Kraken was thought as a complete myth of seafarers that just didn't understand things like weathers and swells that would have taken their boats unexpectedly so they designed a sea monster and then they found that there is a giant squid and they found not only a giant squid but one a next size up a colossal squid it's understandable why it took so long for it to be discovered because they really do keep themselves down very deep so it's it was pretty hard but there is film footage of um one being caught in some deep sea nets and brought up i think it was but you can see one literally sitting next to the side of a boat which is pretty crazy i mean they found bodies on beaches that bit's a bit too thick watch your cut and make sure that you're pretty even you don't want a plank sticking out further than the rest But um, the first footage that they had of a live one was sent down, was a camera on the side of a submersible. And the giant squid actually went after some bait. 
and it was the most infuriating thing to watch because the camera wasn't a fully live feed you got a few seconds and then so there, it was gappy says, I would imagine the first people to see them never got a chance to tell anyone they really didn't they don't take out humans they're too deep the so the generally they were seen as corpses on beaches and the live ones we've had to send down cameras it's only when we've had fishing nets that have been able to go down deep enough and the ones that have been brought up they're not a single fatality actually put as a any of the giant squids as actually causing it which you'd think for the size but what is interesting is they go after whales like whales and dolphin type whales they are found with giant scars circular scars where there's suction cups they the suction cups on them they think are slightly serrated so and what they think that's all about isn't that they're hunting the whales to eat them it's the other way around the whales are doing those really deep dives and they're going down and hunting giant squid and the squid are fighting to get away so I'm not sure they know what they eat yet I've not heard anything about that but it will be the same with a giant squid as it is with all other squids and octopus the beak the size of the beak is what really counts for them because everything else if you can fit the beak through a hole the rest of the animal can fit through because it's all squishy flesh rather than any bones the beak's the only real bony part i'm just cutting this one along the line of the bottom of the ship so i'm making the wood design fit the space so you haven't got to worry so much but look how quick one side's been done and it is really effective isn't it i'm going to leave them as planks i'm not going to smooth them in because it actually if you smooth it all in it just looks like wavy lines when you leave them as solid planks like this they actually look far more convincing as woodwork Her head looks as, that's like cats fitting their heads through isn't it i know right but Her head looks as, nice planks Hearted life says i really fancy some chocolate right now oh yeah i can see why people say chocolates as addictive as class a drugs i wouldn't disagree with them I do like chocolate is one of the few things where I really can taste the difference in the price point so hotel chocolate tastes nicer than Capri's it just does there are a lot of products that you can get that the more expensive stuff tastes exactly the same as the cheap stuff but it just isn't with chocolate and what is what I find funny is the country that produces the most chocolate, which is Africa, eats the least chocolate. And it's not because they've not got a taste for it. It's because a lot of areas don't have the refrigeration in order to stop it, to keep it and stop it melting. So it's more of a higher value product. Let's just, if I cut that, it will be too thin. So I'm just going to slightly stretch it like that. Right, now let's get my lining up right. So again, we're going up the side for the start of that. Monty Hardy likes this. Some cheap chocolate is surprisingly good though. We like little chocolate. Yeah, no, it is. There is good. 
I'm not saying it's um, all bad. I do like a bit of cheap chocolate myself. But I'm saying you can taste it. I think if you did a blindfold test, I think you can put chocolate in price order far easier than you can things like wine. Even though there's a lot of people who are supposed to be wine experts, they do tend to find it harder. That's what happens when you cut with the wrong end. You just push the clay down. Luckily, I can still got a good side. But that was silly of me. You just smudge it all in. I watched a program where they tested a lot of top wine experts, supposedly. They all got it wrong. It's, um, I wonder how much of it is belief rather than actual tasting because they taste different i agree but can you taste the the money i'm not sure anywho um i don't even know how we got on to, oh yes we were talking about chocolate fancying so you yeah these look like little prawlings I suppose I could be cruel one day and make a box of chocolates out of polymer clay. I've seen other people make food I've, out of polymer yeah, clay. Yeah, people do make food out delicious. of clay. It, it does look too delicious though. It's um, dangerous. So again, I'm lining up the plank in the middle and then I'll patch in that gap in a bit. It amazes me, once you've got the cane cut, how quickly it all forms up. I know. There are a lot of people who actually, they focus on making food miniatures that look exactly like the real thing. Amazing. And there's a lot of tricks with it with polymer clay you can get donuts and bread and all sorts of things looking exactly like the original food Marty, Marty Life says, i'll probably eat them one day out of desperation i know right i've got to admit i tested the fact that cocoa powder does not taste as it smells cocoa powder doesn't taste like chocolate it's they it's put they put a lot of other stuff in it to make it taste like chocolate. The one that gets Jamie a lot is I have a shower gel that is chocolate smelling. And it I admit it smells like really, really, really good chocolate actually. And tastes like soap. It does. <laughs> and James was like, maybe I should can just try a little bit and see what... I'm like, fine, lick your finger, it won't kill you. But it doesn't taste like chocolate. It doesn't taste like chocolate, does it? it? No. Cocoa butter. cocoa butter also does not taste like chocolate. Because I use that in my bath as well. Oh, that's the other thing that I did this week. Little things make me happy. Crayola do something called colour bath drops. And they look like little tablets, like paracetamol size. And... They come in red, blue and yellow and they turn the water that colour. And if you mix them, you can get different colours. So the we mix the blue and red and half the bath is doing blue swirling and the other half is red and then you're getting this purple mix. It's so much fun I've watching it mix. There's, there is a flower, a cosmos, that smells of chocolate. I don't think I'm brave enough to even try that one. That would be tempting, chocolate smelling. I did have a um, mint bought for me that was chocolate mint. But it was nice, but I really don't like the taste of mint. Even down to I have to get special toothpaste that is flavourless. I've gone through all the kids ones and they're all pretty vile. They're very, very sweet. I found on Amazon they do a toothpaste and it's designed 
primarily for autistic kids because they don't get on with these massive flavour punches. And it's brilliant. It just tastes of nothing, which is perfect for me. What do you mean? It, it just tastes slightly pasty. It, it tastes texture. slightly chalky. It's got the toothpaste texture to it. But if you put in um, flavour-free toothpaste into Amazon, you should come up with it. Right, we're almost there on this wood. I'm just patching in that end like this. And I think, actually, I've got that bit down there I didn't notice. Where I've got a brown base clay it's easy to miss that I've got a little patch there that hasn't been done right now as you can see that plank will be too big for that space so you can either squeeze it in to the right height or you can literally cut across it and both looks just as good I find so what I'm gonna do let's get you on the halfway point there we go and I'm just gonna squidge it in so it fits and that's why I love working in clay you really haven't got a big problem if something ain't fitting right because you can just there we go right that's all the sides and the bottom done now what I'm gonna do is do all the actual floorboards and then come in with a side plank if that makes sense but if you put the raised bit in first you will find it difficult to get the actual deck in down okay so it's far easier to do it this way around and that's why I made lots of brown and the good thing is I'll have a million uses for this I like making rickety signs for think all of lots of models you can put a few slices together and then right across it I generally use polymer clay in very very thin strips to do my writing but I gotta admit I'm it takes me forever and I'm pretty scruffy at it at the moment once I've got my sign writing skills a little bit better I will show you what I do with it do you try flipping the boards in different directions so that you don't have bits lining up as it much? Or I, always I flip them around them? randomly, um, mainly because I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> it, it just kind of happens. But uh, yeah, and that's that's another useful thing about working with wood rather than a tessellated pattern. You don't have to worry about which side of the slice you're using. You can just grab bits and plonk them on. So I have done this whilst watching stuff. It's that simple to do you barely have to look at it as long as you've lined up that middle line of the bottom plank to your next plank up you really can just go pretty quickly with it so I'm leaving the ends as you can see I will come in and do those in a minute Let's cut a few more slices. Sorry if this is a bit boring, but it does come together quick. 
the bit that is harder is covering the sticks for the mast I will get in and do that very very shortly though right lots of little slices that definitely should be enough to at least cover the deck right let's patch in there so has everyone's week been we've had a glimmer of a bit of decent weather over in the uk it has been pretty awful recently and we've suddenly got predictions for snow now so and it was hailstone in today i really do think my days of doing outdoor fairs are pretty much over the, we just can't rely on any form of consistent weather from the uk anymore so around that post i'm literally just going to push that bit of clay in like that so you haven't got to cut out a dip hole for it or anything like that just push the clay on it works fine Uh, yeah so it's it's been crazy it's been snowing we got hailstone today we got predictions for snow over Wednesday Thursday so I don't know I'm hoping the weather is good because um, my mother-in-law's got a steampunk event that she's going to on Sunday and I'm meant to be going to my twin sister's house even though she's kind of ill and I'm kind of ill, we'll have to see. So fingers crossed that we actually make this. So that bit of planking, can you see? I brought it up the side there and then wrapped it around the stick. <laughs> Sorry, he's just trying to focus for me. Yeah? And the steampunk is, is the steampunk indoors? Oh, good. Because yeah, I think it's going to be the case that in the future we're just going to end up with events just not doing outdoor stuff anymore because you just can't trust the weather yeah, situation nice anymore. Planks. Right, I'm just wrapping those planks up and around to cover that stick yeah it's all very very sad that the weather's doing what it's doing Cause I did like an outdoor fair it was so much fun just to get good weather and then you've got the best lighting for the things that you're selling but yeah no oh well ho oh hum right I've got a bit of a gap down there. Let's push that in like that and trim off this excess along the side. You've got to be careful that you're not shaving too much of the actual clay so that it, you start cutting into the side of your model. So you've got to be careful when you cut in situ like that. That's why I'm far more into just smudging the clay to make it fit the space rather than cutting. There we go. Right. It's covered to this point so far. Yeah. So that is a convincing wooden boat. I want to just bring a rim up the top like that and that's so that it when we got it up on its side it looks like a proper Viking longboat because they did have higher sides and then a shield so that the people rowing were protected against 
Did they have arrows back then or was it just spears? I think it might have been spears. I'm not entirely certain. But either which way, the shield setup would be very, very important for the protection of the guys rowing around. Because they would use these little simple boats and they would take them to go conquer new lands. Which you'd think they would need something a bit more complicated than what a longboat really is. It's actually quite a simple little design. Right, just bringing it along the side like that. And one last one in here. It's easy to think that our ancestors really didn't have much ability to do much. And it's surprising when you actually look back Especially some civilizations like the Minoans, they were really quite advanced. Now, the trick here is to keep those sides looking straight and not all wonky out of place. Not as easy as you'd first think. And if you think you're not going to be able to manage that, just keep it without the little sides in the side panels in because it looks better being flat than it does having the three dimensions but it all being out of kilter if that makes sense so i never cut the right amount that is awesome it all just exactly fitted right there we go so finished boat and you've got sides in and you're keeping them right so we've got the designs on the ends to do and this mast so I'm going to take the mast out for now And we're going to, actually, let's mark off how deep down that goes so we don't want to get that covered. So what I'm going to do, let's find my brown felt tip or a pencil. Pencil would do. You don't want to come in with a bright colour and in colour on your actual clay. I'm just on that stick, drawing a little pencil line where the clay stops there we go and I can put this to one side now pencil back so can you see we want to leave that bare because we need that to go in the hole but we need to wood cover these the rest of these sticks now a swig of drink did I mention the hedgehog said nice planks could have space out you did say fairy hedgehog said nice planks thank you right for covering the mast wires you want to keep your slices pretty thin very thick ones you're gonna end up with a a very thick mast and cracking happening when you try to curve it round So some very, very, very thin slices. I'm going to do several so I know I've got enough and don't have to keep coming back and cutting. So these, I would say, we're looking at two or three millimetres thick. Whereas the siding, it's not really that big a deal what kind of size you're going to use for the planks. So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up with that black line I just drew and putting it in the centre of that plank. And I'm bringing it all the way around 
like that can you see and there is a bit of crack in there already even though it's pretty thin the slices that I've used but that's okay it's not gone all the way through to the white and as we tap on it and push it gently and spin it like this that crack will disappear so we're ready to go in with the next slice so again in the center of the slice and then bring the sides up can you cause Whoop. cracking on purpose in order to make it look more woody you can cause cracking on purpose to make it look more woody but you will find that a ship's mask would not use wood with cracks and knots in it they get that pretty smooth so can you see this is a Perhaps big kind of crack that you're trying to aim to not get yeah so if that does happen to you just bring it back round, seal that crack in it might be cracked if the kraken's it may be cracked if the kraken's breaking it up that is true so you can have that as just a design feature you can come in with your pin tool afterwards and put in some artificial cracks but make sure you don't go all the way through to the wire in the inside so just keep tapping it down and giving it a little bit of a twist and that's on now we're on for the harder bit which is that cross so what I tend to do is I'll go up one side again within the middle and I'm pinching along either edge of that cross can you see like that and then continue it back up like you did with the bottom end of bringing it round like that now that leaves you with that gap on the other side like that see that gap you're coming in with another bit of wood and you only need it to be long enough just to fill in that space like that and then you really are going to need to go around and pinch that on very firmly so that it's in place and helping support that joint see top and bottom of that joint round the sides make sure it's all in I'm going to bring the clay even though that plank was slightly too short for that stick if you roll and slightly pull you can bring clay up especially since you've got a little bit too much around that joint because you've added two lots that gives you some more just to bring it up and twist it so that that stick is now covered fold it over and then twist it in place so it's fully covered once you bait you're not going to get stabbed with wire So, we got that far. Yeah? So we just got to do that crossbar. And it's more of the same really. You're going to bring that instead of touching. If you just bring it and it touches, there's not so much support. If you overlap it a little bit, can you see like that it's just slightly over the back instead of being up next to which would be sort of there yeah you're going to slide it just over a bit more so that it helps secure up that joint and then bring it round whoop like that now if you have the problem I've just created for myself, there's a little patch 
that hasn't been covered there you can literally come in with just tear off a bit of wood from another panel and just fill it in so even though it looks like a scruffy clutch of a fix it works absolutely fine now it's up to you if you want that crossbar the same thickness as the main mast pole I'm going to make it thinner so what I'm doing is I'm holding at that joint and I'm just pulling the clay up the rest of that stick so that it is then thinner and covers the whole length and again like we did with the mast fold over the end and smooth down where it joins so like that we got the other side to do and then that will be done what I'm going to do is the mast the red and white striped mast I'm going to add that in once I bait this ship because I don't want to get brown onto that white and where it'll be thin it's liable to flap around a little bit before I actually get it in the right place and I don't want it sticking to raw clay raw clay does stick to baked clay but it takes you pushing and smudging it Whereas if you've got raw clay and raw clay because it's sticky, you can literally, it will stick to what it touches. If that makes sense. So again, got that extra bit in and I'm bringing that stick up. Now because it's the second one, you've got to make sure that it matches the first side. Whereas the first side didn't have to match anything so it's easier but you don't want one side thinner than the other so if it gets to a point where you're noticing one side's thinner just add more clay to the end and carry on bringing it up like that there we go we're almost over the edge fold it over because it's important to make sure you secure the ends because no one wants to pick up a model to have a look at it and get stabbed by it. There we go. So we now got the wooden cross. I can move this lot out of the way. It's going to be the mast, obviously. Now, whoop, like this. Now, you can put it in place and then do the end bits, but you've got to make sure that you don't knock it. What I suggest is we do the two end details and then put the mask back in. So we need to first off decide which side is going to be just the swirly curl over and which side is going to be the dragon. I reckon that side should be the swirl and that side should be the dragon. So it's easier to do the swell. So we'll finish, we'll do that first. So I'm putting in a plank on that end bit, curving it round like we did with that mast. But can you see, let me bring it up. There is a whole lot of stick up, up clay that isn't attached to any metal wire. And that's what you want because this you're still going to fold over on itself like that pinch it on the tip and then we're going to roll it up oops don't don't knock the walls off so keeping it straight and in line then from the tip we're going to just start to swirl that over get it into a decent shape I will hold it up for you in a second once I've got it looking right there we go that'll do so like that 
yeah so it's still and you want that little tick to stick to that top side just to give it extra security yeah so it's the dragon side now and this is going to be the harder bit what I might do is make the dragon and then put it on so what I want is a fair old chunk of clay but I don't want all that white well all that solid brown rather so what I'm going to do is hide it up this way cut a thin slice and then cover it so where it is the end cap which is one solid cover color I've just cut a slice and stuck it onto that do the same for the bottom then we need to shape this into a dragon's head it's going to be too much clay I know this that's fine right let's first off form that into a stick so like that now I'm going to push back on the tip to make more of a bulging head sort of shape like that and then come along and do a muzzle so that sort of thing yeah that's the start of it then I'm going to come in and open that mouth by cutting a line down it like that that always distorts the lower jaw so you have got to come in and just pinch that back into shape so we're now got a head yeah and if you think your lower jaw is too fat you can bring it in from the neck like that yeah now let's bring the neck in a little thinner so you've got more of a rounded head like so and I want more of a forehead so I'm just going to pinch up like that there we go now we're going to do eyes so what I want to do for my eyes is I'm going to get some really tiny little two by three millimeter bichrome beads where's my tweezers gone there we go I'm going to get a black one of those and push it in either side you've got to make sure that you're holding the holes where the beads are so they will end up inside the clay rather than actually on the outside which looks really scruffy push that into place and bring the clay around see so whoops like that I'm going to do the same the other side black one I do like my little organizer drawers you've got to make sure that you get your eyes level with each other because they look odd otherwise you can feel where the first eye is so it's not that hard to do I might make that mouth a little deeper just bring that there we go like that now we can go for a top eyelid I think let's get the beads back by cutting a little thin slice of brown plank like that and I think 
I'm only going to need a tiny, tiny little bit like that. Yeah, just enough to cover it so it doesn't look so shocked. It does well if you don't put in a top eyelid you will find your animal looks shocked now can you see whoops let's bring it down here it's like a little semicircle I've done but I made sure that the corners are pointed you can put in a bottom eyelid I often don't bother now what I'm gonna need is a tiny little ball tool these are some of my most used tools. I do advise anyone that's really getting into clay, the tools that you're gonna really need are your tissue blades, your ball tools, and your needle tool. Most other things aren't so important. Um, I do like having something with a triangle shape. So anything like that or like that you want something with a point because then you can do long ears but other than that really tissue blades craft knife ball tool set rolling pin yeah they're my most used but again, if you're into doing other sorts of things, so if you are a jewellery maker, you probably have a whole different range of tools that you love the most. But for sculpting, this is it. I know a lot of people love the rubber tip tools for smoothing it out. I always find they just make my clay crack. So, yep, yeah, I'm just using this to attach the eyelid in and shape it up how I want like that whoops when you're doing one make sure you don't smudge the other one and if you do just come in and fix it up a little so it looks right okay there we go top eyelids on them both yeah now are we gonna do teeth I think teeth are gonna be a bit difficult what I think I'm going to do is put this into place. So measure out how much neck clay you're going to need, which is probably about down to there. And then I'm going to put a couple of horns on the top once he's in place. So like this. Whoop. Just picking up my boat. Move that out of the way. When you put your tissue blade down, sharp side facing away from you. The amount of times I've almost cut myself just supporting under that wire and then pushing that head into place like this. Then you can actually angle the head how you want. So there we go. Now what I want to do is put a couple of horns on it because it's looking more swan-like than dragon-like at the moment. So what I'm going to do, some of my little excess, you want two finished sticks. Like that, that'll do oh, for one. This is so cute. Thank you. Oh, so now. You want to push your stick so that it's got a flat side to it. If you don't push it flat, you won't get the really good spiral. Hubby did question this, so I gave him some clay to try it out with, and he made me right. See that nice spiral shape? Whoop, there we go. That nice spiral shape. That does not happen if your clay is a rounded stick. Have you read, I don't know what Hot says, have you read Robin Hobb's books, Living with the, uh, with the Living Ships? Robin Hobb's books, no. Living Ships. No, nope, that's a new one on me. 
you one. might have to send me a link to that one because I'm always into new sci-fi fantasy books. I know I probably shouldn't say this, but I do find a lot of them on YouTube as audiobooks, which really helps me when I feel rough because then I haven't got to read it. It's just telling me stories. So that's often what I do when I'm bedridden is find a good audio book. Right, so I've got two horns now. Let's pick up my boat. Get it central to my face because you want them to be even. And I'm going above the eye and then round the back and then putting a twist in it like that. So let's do the same the other side. Whoop. Spin it round. Above the eye. then it's so hard when you've got something you can't just put down without it rolling over like this give it a twist and a fiddle right that looks kind of right to me let's put you a bit more above the eye there Right, here we go. So, horns. Whoop, you keep wanting to fall sideways. There we go. What do you reckon? Yeah. So, making sure that's straight. I might actually use that little twist that I took off the end for a horn that was too long and make that a forehead horn just curve it up a bit and whack that in the middle there there we go right that's looking viking longboat to me that looks good to me yeah so then we can put that mask back in place push it down and make sure that it sticks firmly to the bottom if it doesn't and you've had your sizes a bit out you can either bring the stick up out of the oh, hole and just twisting it down thank you very very much you're lovely or you can add a bit more to the bottom or you can do a little ball of clay around the base just to get it to join in but you've got to make sure that your clay sticks to the clay of the boat and that you've got your mast around the right way and also that you're not knocking down the walls so it's a bit of a make sure everything's all right Whoop. don't unstick there we go right i think i'm going to need to support that dragon head when it bakes so we are like that yeah that is looking very viking longboat now the only other thing i'm gonna do to this before i give it its first bake is i'm gonna add the shields in down the side now you can make just plain round shields or let's get all this wood out of the way you can do what i've done and spend some time fiddling with clay and make some vikingish kind of designed shields so these are all literally just browns spiraled on themselves and then the spirals stacked up and a slice taken off it these here you've literally doing that so you've got some triangles and you hold the center of the shield and twist the outside edge and you get that sort of swirled line other than that they're literally just triangles put in together or plain circles with some silver around it and i've used a little crystal bead in the center of most of them because most viking shields had a metal bump in the middle 
now what we're going to need to do is there's going to need to be oils going in in between each of the shields so i'm going to divide this into two lots of six wow those shields are amazing thank you i would have shown you all how to do them i didn't think they were going to turn out that impressive if i'm honest i thought they were going to be really really basic and i got fiddling so i'm trying to put ones that are not the same together so one of these as well let's do that one Oop. right one two three four five i've got one more to put in that mix i reckon i will go for that one no that one there we go six for one side and you're putting these up by the lip that you put in place so that they are the halfway mark is at the top edge one don't push them down too firmly until you've got them situated how you like three let's go whoop this is the thing you, they're so fragile when they're raw you can easily knock the edges off if you haven't stuck them down properly so that is always a risk point with your shields so probably like that bring that slightly over a bit bring this one slightly over a bit because i think it's going a little too close to the front there we go because the um oars are going to go in between the shields so that's the first side now flip it over and don't squash it and we're going to do the second side so again make sure you don't push them in place until you've got them where you want them and you're best off making them on greaseproof paper first because then you can peel them off easy but what i googled was google images viking shields and there's a whole lot of designs some really basic ones some even more complicated than these and you're just going to have to have a play around and a google search and find what you want two three four five but it was a good way of putting a bit of colour onto them all, even though they seem to use mainly red, green and browns as their colour schemes. That needs to go over here. But originally I did think I was just going to go for plain shields. So that looks alright to me. I'm just pushing them in place right so we've now got some shields in place so that's the first side let's bring them up close and dragon horns the front ones don't look like they line up. what do you mean oh yes that's true this is slightly further forward hmm refiddle yeah, it's just the front ones that are not lining up right. You are right. So, what I'm going to do is on this side, bring them back a bit. Whoop. And this is why they say, work it out before you push them down. There we go. Be very, very gentle and support the back. And you pull them off and you should be able to get away with it. 
Look at that, possibly a little further over there. Does that look a bit, what do you reckon? Hmm, I think I might have to do a bit of fiddling on this off once we're off stream. But this is as far as I'm going to get because once I've got them lined up, I'm going to bake it and then I'm going to make the oars and the sow. Okay. So next week, we're going to do the sow, the oars, and then the week after, we'll make the kraken. I may also do the base as well as the sow and oars next week. So I hope you like the start of our Viking longboat. And thank you all for coming. I, there's loads of other videos on my YouTube if you're interested in seeing what I've been up to. Um, do like, follow, share, any questions you've got, just get in touch. I hope you all have a really great week and I will see you next Wednesday at the same time. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, I will see about trying to do that. Alright, see you soon. See you next Wednesday.